of Gift of the Givers. Dr. Suleiman, thank you very much indeed for joining us. We're in the middle of this 10 days of mourning period. It is when the body is lying in state uh, in Pretoria, in Tswane, and we have seen people coming in and viewing the late Mandela. How does that make you feel, seeing the body lying in state now? It's very dignified. Mandela was dignified when he was alive and is dignified even in passing. I don't think anyone has had a funeral like this in the history of the world, you know, in the history of this country and this continent especially. And the world leaders from great countries have been here to honor and acknowledge the man. And that kind of acknowledgement doesn't come cheaply. It comes because your spirit, your character, your personality exuded something in your lifetime. And people have shown, have acknowledged that spirit by being here and for the whole world media to stop all news items and focus on one person mm. tells you a lot about the character of that personality. Mm. He, it's almost like a saintly figure, but he hated uh, being called a, a saint. Uh, but it was hard not to idolize a man uh, with such a virtue. How much of an inspiration, when you do your work around the world, how much of an inspiration was he to you? We can't avoid thinking of him because in every country that we go to, the moment we get off the plane, for example, you know, Saudi Arabia, of course, we haven't done any work there. But when early in the early years, when you got off the plane and you tell them you're from South Africa, they look confused. The moment you say Mandela, the, the bell's gone. They understand where you're coming from. In terms of disasters, every country we go to, the first question they ask us, how is Mandela? You know, even when he was well, how is Mandela? So in every area that you go to, his name is worldwide. You know, when you come from South Africa, that's the first question they ask you, how is Mandela? Have you come from Mandela's country? Mm -hmm. It prompted you to write a tribute to Mandela. What is the theme of this tribute? Reconciliation. A man who can be incarcerated for 27 years, losing the best part of his youth, losing those that are close to him, colleagues, family and friends, being isolated from his family, from his wives and his children because of what had happened to him, and to come out with no malice after 27 years. I mean, that's an amazing feat. And to come out and then to have tea with Fordwood's wife, to allow, to permit the playing of the stem in the new anthem, because the stem was regarded as the anthem of the oppressor. To allow that, I'm sure, to the disagreement of many of his colleagues and many of the people in the country, yeah. but that showed class, it showed leadership. He had an aim, because we keep going backwards by fighting about all issues, it won't serve the country. He realized bold steps had to be taken to bring about reconciliation. And part of reconciliation is to accommodate other people. Yeah. That's the way you build a country. And then, of course, I think the greatest moment to me was the day he walked into the rugby final, mm. wearing the number six jersey. And what was remarkable, I mean, only a year later, this man, the whole country, the media, the textbooks, everybody called a terrorist. Mm. And a year later, as he walked into the ground, of which probably 98% were white people in the stadium, and they were shouting, Nelson, Nelson, Nelson. How do you achieve that in one year? It's almost an impossibility. It was a tremendous mm -hmm. time in, in history, yeah. isn't it? And just going forward, would you put, obviously, reconciliation by consensus is one of his legacies, but would you put it down at that only, or there's other facets of his legacy? No, his, his, his intense compassion for those, you know, the enemy and, and colleagues and those who are downtrodden. I think what is very striking, I met him for the first time, in Peter Marisburg on the 25th of April, 1997. He was granted the freedom of the city. And what amazed me that this leader, who, had the, who the whole world had now recognized, could take the time to talk to ordinary people. Mm. You, know, he, you say you look up at a leader. You don't, I can't say he was looking down at you. He was looking up to us. And we were smaller in, in stature, in size, and in character to this man. But there was such humility that it was making you melt at that moment when you met him and you felt dwarfed by this stature, but truly the thing that strikes you most is the humility of this man and his compassion for the others and his respect for other people and how he dignifies other human beings in spite of who he is. He was very humble. Um, he, as uh, President Obama did say, he had a certain element of mischief as well. Do you remember any fond memories in terms of off camera where uh, you guys met and uh, had, a, had a bit of a chat? It was only at that time, you know, when I met him in Peter Marisburg. It was, it was always serious. Mm. And I have a policy, you know, when heads of state, although I had a chance to meet many of them, you, you know they're busy and you don't want to intervene and, you know, and interrupt when they have such a busy schedule. So that one meeting that I met him on, in Peter Marisburg, to me, that was a great meeting. 
And I mean, to me, his personality, even w without speaking, said a lot. There you go. Dr. MTS Suleiman is from the Gift of the Givers, just telling us a bit about the former late great statesman, Dr. Nelson Mandela. Back to studio.